What's going on guys, it's your average consumer and it's iPhone day, baby. Inside of this box, we have the iPhone 12, you saw the title, and we've got a few other things as well. So we are going to be unboxing everything, checking them all out and seeing what all the fuss is about. Personally, I'm really excited. Carl? I've been waiting for this for you. Jay? Yeah, I can't wait. All right, let's do this, let's do this. Why are we still using this kunai? Haven't we decided that it's too dangerous for this? <laughs> it's fun. Ah, let's see what we've got. Ooh, there's a few things in there. But all right, shall we just start with like this guy right here? The iPhone 12. So this is the standard iPhone 12 and this is the blue version. And man, the box, guys, it's so much smaller. They took out the power adapter, which we'll talk about in a second. We'll get to the other stuff once we're done with this guy, but let's dig in. Okay, so let's unbox this blue iPhone, which is the best color. Thank you, Apple. But let's uh, get this open. Oh, smooth. Oh. Come on, you gotta be kidding me, man. This thing looks good. Good. Oh, interesting. So we've got a new, what is this? Not really a screen protector, but we got a new film on the front. It's made of like paper. So it's not that typical plastic that we usually see. It also of course comes with a lightning to USB-C adapter. Now this is both a good and maybe not so good thing. Uh, it's a good thing because with this cable, this is the cable you need to get access to fast charging on the iPhone. But you do need a USB Type-C power brick. Now, I know that's not very common in households these days. The regular USB Type-A brick, which is standard, everybody has one of those at least. It's supposed to help with the environment, but I know a lot of people aren't gonna wanna hear it. And we got some paperwork. This is pretty small paperwork. A SIM ejector tool, a sticker, one sticker. Is this the smallest bit of paperwork we've ever gotten in an iPhone box? Apple's really changing it up. So, I mean, it does look like they're trying to keep in the environment in mind and just put less stuff in the box, not bulk it up. This is probably as simple as it gets for an, a an unboxing. So, shall we just take a look at the 12? There we go. This feels so, so good in the hand. So Apple has gone back to a similar design that we first saw with the iPhone 4, these hard edges and the iPhone 5, uh, but it does have that glass back like the iPhone 4, but now it all it's all pretty seamless the way it's all to put together here. So I'm a huge fan. One of the biggest reasons I like it is because now, as a tech reviewer, I can just stand up my phone like this, get my shots and I don't have to put anything behind it. It's the little things, guys. It's the little things. Uh, this blue, though, looks so good. Thoughts, guys? I'm getting there. This is the one you're getting, huh, Carl? Yeah, definitely. Jay, what do you think? It looks nice. Yeah, you like that, right? Yeah. But quick tour around the phone itself. On the left side, we do have the volume buttons as well as that switch for the mute. And on the right side, you've got your power button. And I found out this was like a mystery during the keynote when no one really knew what this was. But apparently this is for the 5G antenna. And in the back we have the dual camera system. We've got a wide and ultra wide lens. Very similar to what we saw on the iPhone 11. And on the front we still have that same notch. Oh yeah, the bottom has that lightning port. So, standard stuff. So we turn this on. Ooh, there we go. Now one thing about the display, when it came to the iPhone 11 as well as the iPhone 10R, it had a lower resolution display but now it has Apple's Super Retina XDR display. And this is the same display that you'll see even on the iPhone 12 Pro. So across the entire iPhone 12 line, you get the same quality screen, which is absolutely a good thing if you don't wanna pay that higher price tag. And in case you didn't know, there are four other colors when it comes to the iPhone 12. There's a black, white, red, a green that looks like mint, like a really light mint, but it's green and of course, this blue. Okay, so while this sets up, like I said, let's check out what else we have in the box. Oh, we just gonna go for it. We're just gonna go for it. So here we have the iPhone 12 Pro. 
So this is just the regular smaller version of the Pro, not the Pro Max. Now let's unbox this thing. This thing is also as slim as the 12s box. So very, very new box designs or sizes rather. There we go. Yo, and let me tell you guys, this right here is the Pacific Blue model. And this is everything I want in an iPhone. So I am extremely, extremely excited to see what this looks like. Oh baby, that looks dope. Oh, let's just compare the two really quickly. Oh, they're different. Yeah, this is Pacific blue, this is just normal blue. And because the iPhone 12 Pro has a different finish on the back, it's not just the regular glass, this is a different finish. You got that matte kind of look to it. But on the sides, it's stainless steel, so you can see the reflection there, and it just feels premium. So, Carl, now which one are you getting? <laughs> Carl's just shaking his head over there. Shall we pop off the top? Always so satisfying. Now you guys might not know, my favorite color is teal. I love like the blues and the greens. This thing is just right up my alley. So I'm completely in love with this. Now, overall, the design is very much the same. Uh, you got the same buttons. Everything is pretty much exactly the same as the iPhone 12, even the overall body size. So they're both rocking 6.1 inch displays. And this is actually an increase compared to last year's model. So last year's iPhone 11 Pro had a 5.8 inch display. This one is 6.1, so the screen's a little bit bigger. Now, one thing that is different besides the texture of the back is the addition of a telephoto lens. So these actually share the same camera system when it comes to the wide and the ultra wide lens, but the telephoto lens adds another element of, for taking pictures. Now, something else that has been introduced with the iPhone 12 Pro is this guy right here at the bottom of the telephoto, and that is LiDAR. So with LiDAR, you're gonna be able to do some really cool things with augmented reality, but it should also help when it comes to taking photos as well as using it for video. It helps with like the autofocus, that kind of thing. The only other difference we'll see is on the software side of things, uh, the camera allows you to have the Apple Pro Raw feature. Uh, we'll see that in a future update, but that's going to allow a lot of flexibility to kind of change up things like photos and edit them the way a professional would. So we're gonna see that on the Pro version, not with the regular. So while these are very different and you're paying for material choices and a telephoto lens and some Pro features, you're, these are very, very close in terms of the actual product, which is a really good thing for people looking at just the regular 12. If you don't feel like you need any of those pro settings or you don't really care about the overall body, maybe you're just gonna throw a case on it, you're saving about 200 bucks here and that's a pretty good value when it comes to this. You're getting the same screen, same overall feel in the hand. So it's gonna be a good time to be an iPhone 12 owner since you can save quite a bit of money. Now you're probably wondering, Judd, where's the iPhone 12 Pro Max, right? Well, the 12 Pro Max is coming out later. It's gonna be out in November. It's a slightly different version of the Pro model. It's gonna be a bigger, beefier phone. So we're going to be seeing a larger photo sensor. We're gonna see some changes to the lenses. So we'll be seeing that one a little bit later. And that also goes for the iPhone 12 mini. Different phone, different release date. Oh, also to mention the prices, this one's 999. Pro Max is gonna be 100 bucks more at 1099. And this is 799. Mini is going to be a hundred bucks less at $6.99. But I think it's time for me to stop gushing at the phone, even though I think ugh. this phone makes me not want to use a case. Now I ain't stupid. I'm going to still use a case because if I drop this thing and break it, I'm going to cry. But it really does make me not want to use a case because it is so gorgeous. Now, one thing I will say, is you will get fingerprints all over this stainless steel body. So if that's gonna bother you, keep that in mind, but I don't think that's a deal breaker. Okay, so let me go ahead and get the setup process going on here. So while that's doing its thing, we'll keep going inside of the box. Uh, and 
I didn't go through it in here, but it's the same ex unboxing experience. You got your cables and your little teeny tiny bit of paperwork. Now, while these are doing their thing, there are some new accessories that Apple has also introduced with the new iPhones. So let's go ahead and check those out. So first off, we got two cases, right? But something that's actually kind of cool with the bodies of the 12 and 12 Pro being so similar, you can now pick up an iPhone 12 case for the Pro or the Pro case for the 12. They're the same exact case. So here we have the silicone case. Now, Carl, we love Apple silicone cases, right? <laughs> it's just like I asked you a question. <laughs> but yes, we love the silicone cases. I always go for them. Uh, that or Apple's leather cases. I tend to like the proprietary cases. So here it is. This is the blue silicone case. But something you're gonna notice here, guys, you see that ring in the middle? So this is a new system that Apple has introduced called MagSafe. So with this MagSafe, you're gonna be able to do a couple of cool things. There are magnets involved, that's the name Mag. Uh, but what you can do with these is basically snap on different accessories like wireless chargers, cases, whatever it may be, and then you can use them that way. And the phone can detect some of them. We'll talk about that in a second. MagSafe is a completely new thing and it is going to be awesome. All right, so we're in on the Pro and we are in on the 12. So just to throw on a case, let's throw the case onto the 12, shall we? Now, something cool that you might not have known about is if you have like an iPhone 12 and you have one of Apple's MagSafe cases and let's say you put it on, Ah, you see a little animation yeah. and it just told you what color the, uh, the case was. So you saw that blue ring that popped up. That's because we're using a blue case. Uh, let's see the feel in the hand. I'm good with this. And we also have a clear case over here, which I think is going to look kind of cool on the Pro. Since the Pro looks so beautiful, like we got to let it show a little bit, right? So the clear case still has to have that ring uh, that you know we're going to use for MagSafe. So you can kind of see it here. It's funny though, someone said uh, this kind of looks like a floppy disk. I don't know if you guys are even old enough to remember, uh, but a floppy disk looks similar. Jay, we'll throw up a floppy disk uh, so yeah, that people yeah. can see. You got that clear animation. That kind of sucks because I like being able to see the actual color in the phone. Now this is, this is not bad. I just don't know how I feel about the, the circle, but it looks like overall, you can see the phone pretty well, looks good. The fill in the hand is pretty nice. Silicone's where it's at, the silicone for sure. All right, so we got iPhones, we got cases. What else do we have? Now, the biggest thing is going to be wireless charging, right? So here we have the MagSafe charger. Here you have it. But interesting, this also does not come with a power brick. At least though, we do have a power brick right over here. But like I said, you're going to need a USB type C power adapter. Here you have it. But all right, let's see this MagSafe. Let's plug this in. Okay, so we've got our MagSafe charger over here. Now, when it comes to wireless chargers, they can be pretty annoying if you don't get the perfect positioning, you can completely miss the charging spot. So you might find yourself inching it back and forth a little bit for a little while. It's convenient, but it's also inconvenient at the same time. But with MagSafe, you shouldn't have to worry about any of that. You can just take it. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Now, what's also new with this MagSafe charger is that you now have 15 watt wireless charging, uh, but that's only for the new iPhones. I don't believe if you pick up like an iPhone 11, you're gonna be able to use this charger and take advantage of those 15 watts. But there you have it. Now you can even pick up your phone while it's charging, which is kind of cool actually, because that's always been like a caveat to wireless charging. If you're using it, you pick up your phone to actually use it, you're done charging. But with MagSafe, you can pick it up now, still use it to, I don't know, write a quick text, make a quick call, whatever it may be, and you still got it charging in the back. I like this. What do you guys think? MagSafe me. <laughs> and for those of you who might be wondering, do you need a MagSafe wireless charger to make this work? No, you can use any wireless charger that you may already own and it'll still work with the iPhone 12 with no problem. MagSafe isn't necessary. It's just a feature that the iPhones have access to now. So that's dope, but Apple also sent over a little something extra. So here we have the MagSafe iPhone leather wallet. There are people who actually use this kind of wallet. 
Uh, my sister-in-law uses it religiously. Like she has to have it on her phone. All right, so check it out. So if you wanna put it on, you just slap it on and then you'll see an animation for it too. It has that outline just like the leather wallet. And in case you were wondering guys, this ring is here for a reason so that we can still have access to that MagSafe magnet. You can always put down accessories onto the uh, actual case itself. Now a question I had was can you use this and a wireless charger at the same time? I know a lot of people are probably wondering that. It's kind of on there, but it's not wirelessly charging though. But that's actually not a big deal. Unlike previous accessories like this, it's not using a sticker or an adhesive that would become an issue if you wanna wirelessly charge because those things, you can't just keep taking it on and off. But with the fact that this is using a magnet, now you wanna wirelessly charge, you go ahead, you pop this off, no big deal. And then you, you let your phone charge. It's that simple. How strong is it? How strong is it? Yeah. Well, let's see. That's not bad. If I want to put this in my pocket, right? And then I slide it out. It's strong enough to hold on to being rubbed against my pocket or my jeans pocket. Practical use cases, this thing is going to stay on with no problem. And if you're wondering what it looks like without a case, you just throw this on the back of your iPhone. Still, if you're not using the case, you, you're crazy. You're, you're just crazy. Dang, I wish we could test if this works without with a regular case. Okay, look, so the thing that was inside of it, it's kind of thick. So this is like their make-believe card. Let's just throw it here, right? Are the magnets strong enough to still hold it in place? Yeah, kinda. Oh, it's definitely not as strong of a connection. Yeah, yeah. this'll definitely fall right off. So I don't know if it's going to be smart to put a non-magsafe case on the phone and then a, mag, a non mag safe accessory on top of that. So we'll see, uh, but for now, you should probably mag safe it up. It's safe. You like what I did there? Yeah, that for me. No, get, get out of here, girl. So this is all very exciting. Do we have anything else in here? So this is a little something for me. This is a 5G SIM card from Verizon. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm going to test out what that 5G Verizon life is all about since your boy ain't really on Verizon. I don't have access to that 5G. I, I'm on T-Mobile. They said T-Mobile has 5G in places. It's not near me. So I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna let you guys know. Hopefully we can find like a 5G spot around here that we can hit up and, you know, test out those speeds. But so far guys, just taking a look at the phone themselves, I am super, super pleased. Screen looks awesome. I love that it's a flat flush display. I can't wait to try out the new cameras, all that stuff. I'm just gonna say it. I think this is the best looking iPhone that has ever come out so far. But that about wraps it up for this video, guys. Stay tuned. I'm gonna have a bunch of iPhone 12 content coming soon. Uh, now, for those of you who might be wondering, pre-orders have already started on the, the 16th and they're officially available on the 23rd. So by the time this video comes out, you should see if you can pre-order still. Uh, it might be available, but iPhones are tough. If you enjoyed it, be the cool guy or girl that gives this video a thumbs up. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Till then, it's your average consumer. Peace. All right, I gotta swap my SIM card. Oh no, wait, I gotta use this Verizon SIM card. All right, we'll get to it. <laughs>